Hi, I'm Bill Mayer. I'm one of the list candidates for Solidarity, Scotland, Scotland's socialist movement, in our forthcoming Scottish Parliament elections next year, 2016. Now this vlog today, this is the first in a series of eight, nine, maybe ten vlogs that I'm going to do. And what I'm going, as I'm going to make, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through each of the Solidarity Scotland manifesto points one by one, making a vlog about each one. I'm a bit vague on the number of vlogs I'm going to make because maybe one or two of the points I might split into two vlogs. Uh, what I want to do is try and keep it maybe about 10 minutes total altogether so people don't get too bored listening to me. So, our first point today is anti-austerity. That's what I'm going to talk about in this vlog. Subsequent points, and I've got my notes to make sure I don't miss any out. Subsequent vlogs will cover second referendum, independence referendum, our democracy and accountability bill, burns not bombs, no to fracking, replacing council tax with a fairer income based alternative, uh, a nationalised pharmaceutical company for Scotland, anti oppression and voting in 2016. So, straight to anti austerity. Solidarity is an anti-austerity party. We don't believe in the rhetoric and the nonsense that comes from Westminster and from our big billionaire corporations about there's not enough money to go round. I'll explain why. First of all, it comes in two parts. First of all, uh, we are told that the banking crisis caused this austerity. OK, let's break it down. The bankers irresponsibly gambled our money that we put into into bank accounts across the UK, they gambled that money on offering mortgages to people irresponsibly who had no chance of ever paying, of ever paying that money back. They lost our money with that gamble, so our money went down the drain, they wrote off the debts. Then we bailed out the banks with our tax money. We bailed out Royal Bank of Scotland, Northern Rock, all these banks, we bailed them out with our money. But that wasn't enough. Then the government turned around and said, well, now we've got an economic crisis caused by the banking crisis, so the taxpayers have to pay yet again. And it's going to be the working class who pay because we've got austerity. This is a new thing they've invented. And we all have to tighten our belts and we're all in it together. They tell us there's not enough money to go round. Oh, really? A week after George Osborne told us that he was freezing yet again public sector salaries by 1%, which is effectively a pay cut, is a pay cut for something like the seventh year in a row for public sector workers because there wasn't enough money to go around. The week after that, George Osborne and his cronies awarded themselves a 10% pay rise in the House of Commons. Now, an ordinary MP, if he's not a minister for something or a secretary of state for something else, he makes a minimum of £74,000 now with his 10% pay rise on top of all his expenses. If the government can award themselves fat cat wages and 10% pay rises, then I fail to see how there's not enough money to go round. Let's look at the private sector. The private sector bosses tell us something the same. They say, oh, it's a time of austerity. We have to cut back. You can't have a pay rise this year. And yet, Financial Times tells us that now in 2015, we're in 2015, the average CEO in this country, the chief executive in this country, makes 183 times the wage of an average skilled worker. 183 times more. So I'm not sure exactly how that shows that there's not enough money to go round. There's plenty enough money to go round for the fat cats and there's plenty enough money to go round for the MPs. Then we're told, of course, the big problem here is benefit scroungers and benefit fraudsters. And we've all to spy and snoop and shop on our working class comrades. Well, the reality is that it's not true that we're losing money hand over fist and the money's flowing out like a leaky bucket 
because of benefit fraudsters. First of all, the amount of the benefits budget that goes to people out of work is less than a quarter of the budget, is less than 25%. The biggest proportion of the money that goes out from benefits goes to pensioners, who in the most have worked their entire lives and paid in to the system through the national insurance and the taxes, and they're entitled to the pension in their retirement for the last years of their lives. And what about this benefit, uh, fraudulent benefit claimants? 0.7% of benefit is claimed fraudulently, less than 1%. Now, you would ask yourself, therefore, why is a government dead keen for us to be snooping and spying on our neighbours? They're telling us this is where all the money is going. It's not because the government thinks that if we all shop each other and there's zero benefit fraud, that then they'll have a lot of money and our problems will be solved. That's not why they're doing it. They're doing it because there is plenty enough money to go around. And that money is locked up with the fat cats and the billionaire corporations. And a perfect example is the Amazon warehouse along the road from where I live. I live in Dysart, near Kirkcaldy. Amazon warehouse in Dunfermline. We, the taxpayers, we, the five council taxpayers, paid for that warehouse to be built as a golden hello to Amazon to encourage them as an incentive to come to Fife. And the reasoning was, well, well, we'll encourage them to come to Fife and then they'll create jobs and we will ultimately make that money back through corporation tax from profits from Amazon and then also through PAYE, -P income tax, from all the employees that work there. Well, of course, we know that didn't work. Why? Because... First of all, government, the, I'm sorry, Amazon don't pay corporation tax. They've got an elaborate uh, the, the tax avoidance system set up. So they don't pay corporation tax. They make billions and they pay a couple of million pounds of tax to the UK government for all the money that they make in this country. Secondly, all the employees at Amazon are paid, the vast majority, the minimum wage. So, first of all, they're not paying any income tax. We're not making any income tax back off the salaries for, for these people working there. But worse than that, we're actually subsidising Amazon to employ them because we have to top up these people's wages with working tax credits in order that they'll be able to survive. So, Amazon coming to Dunfermline is costing us money. It doesn't make us money. That's where the money is. And that's just one example. You've got Google, you've got Amazon, you've got Starbucks. And they all have these tax avoidance schemes of one type or another. And these ruses by the government are to take our eye off blaming the fat cats and the politicians and to make us squabble amongst ourselves. So what would we do different in solidarity, briefly? First of all, the reason why the big parties treat us this way and tell us lies about how um, th there's not enough money and get us squabbling amongst ourselves is because these big political parties, the Labour Party, the Conservative Party, the Liberal Democrats, um, who are slowly dying out, they're in the pockets of these big corporations. These big corporations bankroll the big parties. So it's not in the interest of these big parties to turn around and act tough with the corporations. Solidarity is a small independent party we don't take any money from corporations. We rely solely on membership subscriptions from our members. That's how we make our money, such as it is. Secondly, what we're going to do when we're in, in the Scottish Parliament, in power in the Scottish Parliament, we are going to urge the Scottish Government, we are going to urge the Scottish Councils all across the land, 32 local authorities, to set needs budgets, not austerity budgets. Here's the difference. A needs budget is where the council looks at everything that they need, all the money they need for schools, for childcare, daycare, disabled clubs, for all sorts of uh, support for the community across the entire range of the services that the council delivers. And then they set the budget based on the needs of the communities, of societies, of the people 
in Fife or the people in Clackmannanshire or the people in Stirling or wherever it may be. And then we fight tooth and nail with Whiteminster to get the amount of money that we need to deliver on, on our needs budget, to deliver for the people in the communities that we are serving as councils, as a Scottish government. That's the difference. And at the moment what's happening is the councils are kowtowing to Westminster and simply slashing budgets because the money coming from Westminster is slashed. We say, turn that on its head, do it the other way around. That's me, I've come to the end of my anti-austerity vlog, the first vlog in the series. You can find out more at solidarity.scot, that's our website, and stay tuned, there will be further vlogs going through all the points in the Solidarity Manifesto, as I listed at the beginning of this. Um, and the last thing I will say to you, I'll cover this fully in a future vlog, but I'll say this at every vlog. In May 2016, please, we urge you to vote SNP on your first vote, the white paper, and Solidarity on your second vote, the peach paper. Now, when I get to voting 2016, which will be probably the last vlog in the series, I'll go into detail about why we ask you to do that. For the time being, SNP on your white paper, Solidarity on your peach paper. I'm Bill Mayer. And I'm the Solidarity Scotland candidate for Mid-Scotland and Fife. Thank you.